a brand new and interesting whiskey. Well, all right, technically speaking, not exactly brand new release, but reimagined maybe. Now, along with reimagined, we could say reintroduced or maybe even re-released. Now, there is a bit of a history lesson here today along with this new kind of a release. So let's learn some history and let's drink some whiskey. Welcome to Whiskey and Whiskey under Whiskey Chase O'Brien here in Christie's Bar, Kilkenny, the home of whiskey and whiskey. Hope you're keeping awesome. We do have a brand new release here today to talk about. Technically speaking, this is not brand, brand new release. It has been out for a few months now already. And uh, sometimes it's not as easy as you might think to get some of these new releases on the show, regardless of who you are. And as I mentioned at the start, there is a bit of a history lesson here today to this bottle of whiskey. So let's not waste any time and let's get right down to work. This is the Old Comber Irish Whiskey, a brand new release from Ecklinville Distillery. Before I go any further, I just want to make it absolutely clear to all my lovely followers that this bottle was gifted to me from the distillery itself. I have tried on numerous occasions, to be fair, to acquire this bottle from multiple different outlets. And unfortunately, I was just a little too slow in getting to the internet in time to purchase. Hard to believe really seeing as I pretty much live on the internet, but it's true. So a massive shout out to those magnificent people in Ecklinville Distillery for sending the bottle this way. We here in Christie's, thank you. In true Irish whiskey style and form, the first release of this whiskey sold out in a matter of minutes and the rumor mill was rife at the time, spitting out false hopes of more bottles coming quickly down the line. We're still waiting. You could quite possibly be asking yourself at this time, Brian, why are there two different looking bottles of Old Comber on top of your cask? Well, to be completely honest, I'm glad you asked that. There's a little bit of a difference here in what's going on. Allow me to explain. So this right here is the old, old comber. And this right here is the new old comber. And trust me when I say, everything is gonna make sense very shortly. So this old comber right here is more of a collector's item and there's a lot of history behind this bottle and indeed the original distillery. While this old comber here, which happens to be the new old comber, was re-released or released back in May of 2021. And it's from the ever wonderful Ecklinville Distillery, Fanboy, which has revived the famous old comber Irish whiskey brand after a near 70 year absence. Well done you. More on this new release in just a minute. Firstly, and as Huey Lewis once said, let's go back in time. I'm talking way back, back to 1825 when Old Comber was founded and produced at the Comber Distilleries in County Down. Funnily enough, the old distillery is just 10 miles from Ecklinville Distillery these days and roughly eight miles southeast of Belfast. Distilling in Comber can be traced back to the late 18th century. Now the info here does detract a little too much from what I want to talk about today. So for the sake of this video and time, I'm just going to concentrate on the Comber Distillery's operations roughly from 1825 to 1953. Yeah, we're going to try and condense. There's a lot of information. There's a lot of information. Condense. The distillery that was founded in 1845 for the Old Comber was originally a brewery and it wasn't until two men, George Johnston and John Miller, converted the former brewery into a distillery with an initial investment of 8,000 pounds. And there was in fact two distilleries in Comber with the second and much smaller distillery being bought by John Miller around 1860. The firm that actually produced Old Comber whiskey was never really that large. It employed approximately 60 employees in total, which included five excise men. Why did I say it like that? Five excise men. 
Around 1887, both distilleries recorded an output of 150,000 gallons of pot still Irish whiskey. And Old, Cam Old Comber back then was renowned for maturing its whiskey for a long time, up to 20 years for some of the whiskies. True. Now, over the time, the output of the distilleries definitely declined, so much so that by 1914, the output reached 110,000 gallons a year. And in the 1930s, the lower distillery closed down. It was just before this in the 1920s, the upper distillery was completely modernized at a cost of 50,000 pounds and was described as the most up-to-date distillery in Ireland. The update of the distillery was carried out because of a serious fire in 1919 that wiped out much of the main areas of the distillery. What's completely awe-smacking about that is there was absolutely no whiskey lost. Lucky. After all this, well, the upper distillery had closed during the Second World War for a time and reopened in 1945, but it was to never be the same again. Taste in whiskies had certainly changed and Old Comber struggled to find a market. That coupled with a major theft at the distillery, which thieves took whiskey out through the roof, fair play to them, certainly didn't help matters. And sadly, in 1953, the distillery was sold to H&D Wines of Inverness, which purchased it for its stock and to sell the plant in the distillery for scrap. In 1957, Hollywood and Donnelly bought the distillery and sold off more stock and assets. Jack Cook, at one point bought the distillery and in 1970 the last casks of whiskey were bought by James E. McCabe who was a wine and spirit wholesaler of Portadown. You starting to see where I'm going with this? Cool. So we move up to 1993 and James McCabe bottled the whiskey they had with the first run totaling about 5,000 bottles. They most certainly can still be found today. Definitely in auctions but you're going to pay an arm and a leg for the pleasure to own one. All of the bottlings were done in stages over a decade, but the labels were all printed in one go. So this means that all bottles say 30 year old pot still whiskey, but realistically the last remaining bottles were hitting about 40 years of age. And I have to give a shout out to Chris Hennessy for some of the information behind that there. I kind of like to call him the wizard of whiskey. And he's been a bit of a gentleman. Man, Chris. So you can start to begin to see why the historic relevance to this whiskey is so important and why I've included the old bottling here. It does make for a nice story, some history. And to be fair, it drags the ass out of the length of the video here. So uh, I don't have to make a balls of the tasting notes for you guys. I'm sure you're aware I kind of like to repeat myself a touch, a tad, a bit. It's a nasty habit. Trust me, I'm working on it. So the new old Comber, May, 2021. Roughly a thousand bottles in the first production run with more coming before the end of the year. Hopefully soon. I've reached out to the distillery for some info, but unfortunately I didn't get anything back in time for the recording of this video. I don't know, some guys could be on holidays sunning their verses or something or getting food poisoning or something like that. So the new Old Comber, which I will now refer to as Old Comber from now on, is a vatting of pot still whiskies that were finished in the finest of ruby pork casks. For how long? I don't know. Um, I'm told the age statement is about five years, but I can't verify any of that information accurately enough for you. I'm not sure either how long it's been finished in the ruby pork casks. Um, I've heard roughly four months. However, I can of course tell you that it was previously aged in bourbon casks for a little while. That's some top notch investigative work there. Now, the majority of pot still in this whiskey does come from Ecklandville Distillery with a small bit of whiskey being sourced from other distilleries. As this is pot still, it's a 70-30 malted versus unmalted barley with no other grains in it, and it's predominantly double distilled. The first release of this was to coincide with a TV show on the BBC Two called Whiskey Talkin', which explores the history of Irish whiskey. Ecklandville uh, Distillery, which are the custodians of the Dunville's brand, also are now the uh, custodians of the old Comber brand. It's their kind of pot still release of whiskey, with Dunville's being the uh, single malts, obviously. Now, along with all that wonderful information I've given, check out how awesome the labeling on the bottle is. Uh, incredibly retro, very throwback, very feckin' cool, man. Thumbs up in that department for me, lads. I love our retro look. Hopefully you should see a better high quality image on the screen. So we've done enough talking. It's now the moment that we've been waiting for drink time, or as I like to call it at home, yum yum time. And we pour. 
before we get into the glass uh, and the drinking part. If you like any of that information on the history and the Old Comber brand, do consider subscribing, hitting the like button and share it with friends, family, Irish whiskey fans, and those similar. The Irish whiskey thanks you for your support. All right, so let's dive in a little bit. This whiskey and this little beauty is bottled at 46% ABV. Ruby port finish, predominantly double distilled Irish pot still whiskey, predominantly of Ecklinville's DNA. And get this, upon release, a very respectful and value thumbs up for 45 pounds sterling, or roughly about 55 to 60 euros, depending on stockists. Recently going for 170 euros at an auction. And there is a very little bit left in this bottle of whiskey because uh, the Whiskey Chaser Brian decided to share amongst some of my whiskey friends. That's the kind of guy I am, a giver. Don't be nasty. Okay, let's get it on the nose. Let's do some tasting notes. I promise I'll try my best to give you the most accurate I can. Mm. Firstly, a hint of clove, which is kind of giving away to a spicy pot still note, which could be an evidence of its age perhaps. The Ruby Port cast doing a good job of covering that up or helping a little bit. Um, it's a touch young. It is very woody and it's like a fresh woody. Almost, I would say, a pine note. Almost. I'm getting baked apples, but a very subtle baked apples. Vanilla cream. and there is lads drilling in the background, but that's okay. This does come across as quite viscous or heavy, almost thick. Um, there is a nice sweetness from the ruby pork cask in there too, although not as forward as you might expect. Again, doing a great job of covering up a bit of the youth and adding a bit of fruity flavors and fruity notes to it. I would say for a young whiskey or whatever age this is, it's, there's a certain amount of complexity here for me. Uh, there is quite a bit happening. All right, so with those nosing notes done, let's get it on the palate and let's try it out and see where it goes from here. Let's launch it. Ooh, lovely. Creamy mouthfeel, very creamy. 100% no denying it. Toffee, cinnamon spice, big time, right in your face. That baked apple is coming through, but subtle, very subtle. At the end, the pork cask. Introducing, saying hello, shaking your hand, how are you getting on? It's coming through a little more with uh, some raspberry sweetness. Let's try number two, let's launch it. Raspberry notes, definitely there towards the end. Sweet, quite woody, quite woody. Pleasantly woody now, um, with a nice sweetness. Again, that raspberry kind of jammy note, subtle. But at the end there, there is a touch of youthfulness there, won't lie but it's not in your face. The cinnamon spice is definitely something else. I think, let's just finish it off, shall we? I'm gonna regret doing that, I'll tell you why in a minute, but there's plenty of heat on the finish, nice finish. Mouth is coated very, very well, surprisingly. The, um, the toffee note and the raspberry sweetness have some serious, serious hang time. Um, on the finish, you wouldn't think it was as usefulness uh, as everything is kind of slowly tapering off. Nicely balanced, touch of treacle. Yeah, touch of treacle. Everything is kind of creamy and lovely and balanced well. That's really tasty. It would be lovely if we could compare the two. Now I know that this is a uh, non-age statement and this is a minimum of 30 years of age. So it wouldn't really be fair to compare them, but it would be nice to see if the DNA to some extent was similar in certain ways. And I just so happen to have a little sample. 30 year old pure pot still, 1953 distilled. Well, we have a little stuff. Now it has been in the drawer for a while at home. I hope it's not ruined in any way, shape or form. 
We'll get a little in the glass. And I pray to God that it's, the sample is good. Retro, I love this. Oh, that is pleasant. That is very pleasant. We're good. It's so much, it's so different. There's so much, uh, there's kind of a grainy note coming through. Um, there's a sweetness there from the cast. There's almost like a wax undertone to it, a waxy kind of note. That's nice. There's, um, there's a very fresh, vibrant kind of uh, pine note, woody note. It's a very fresh woody note. I'm not entirely sure if that was what that was finished in. I know Old Comber were, you know, uh, port finished whiskies, and I think Sherry as well. Could be wrong on that, but different, totally different, but woody. The woodiness is definitely coming through a little bit more. Um, I said this was woody. That also equally is woody and it's fresh. Touch of funk, touch of funk, but nice, nice funk. That's. It's a lovely little dram. Let's have a taste. Let's watch it. This is where it changes, definitely. Pot still spices, but you're getting a little bit more of the, I want to say the malted on malted kind of grain, graininess to it. There's a very, very slight medicinal note to it that's kind of carrying through to the finish as well. little bit of almost like dark chocolate or tobacco on the finish. There's literally people with chop saws here at whatever time it is in the morning behind me making loads of noise. So I do apologize if you hear that. But needs must. This is a functioning working pub. Shit happens. Ah, uh, there's a bit of that touch of that medicinal note coming through um, that's in the glass now. It's really nice, it's really different. Finish it off, slaunch it. Woody, grainy. Um, lovely little bit of sweetness there as well. Not overly spicy, as spicy as this. Aged. Finish, little bit of that medicinal. Little bit tangy on the, 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 the back of the palate. Drinker, totally, totally. It's nice to be able to try the two of them side by side. Completely different. Um, but what they do have is the, the kind of woody element that are very, you know, kind of similar. Um, you know, for this one, a little bit more of the grain comes through. For this one, a little bit more of the spiciness and the youthfulness. Obviously, you're going to have that on this one. But uh, yeah, that was cool. Let's try that. I didn't think that was going to happen today. But yeah, it did. You're welcome. So to sum up, where are we on this? I've heard varying reviews of this little bottle of Ruby Port Sunshine. Am I slightly biased because I love anything finished in port? That could be possible. That's not totally out of the realm of being, but would I be a little bit biased because I may have gotten a free sample? Absolutely not. And if you think that, you need to slap yourself. As is always the case when I drink whiskeys, I give you my thoughts. Those thoughts are indeed my own and never influenced by any outside parties. So this release, not overly influenced by the Ruby Port cask in terms of sweetness, but quite wood forward. And there are elements of youth here. It's good though. I do like it. I do genuinely like this now. It stands on its own. It's a, it's a real great dram to see what the Eklundville Pot Still Whiskey is like. And yeah, very good. If I had one thing I think I would say about this, I think I would like to see it just maybe a touch older. Just touch, touch, touch older. In terms of value, not a bad price point either. I mean, you gotta give it a thumbs up there. I'm really looking forward to hopefully trying the next batch of this whenever it does land. Um, it's definitely on the right way, and I would totally recommend trying a sample if you can get your hands on it somewhere, or a bottle when it comes out. So once again, just want to say thank you to the folks at Ecklandville Distillery for hooking me up with this. Um, it was indeed a pleasure. Uh, the lads I shared it out with thought it was lovely as well, so. 
Cheers to lads at Christie's here for letting me in at this ridiculous time. It's been a pleasure. Until the next tasting, stay safe out there and drink Irish. Chat soon. Slanja. <laughs>